Hey, welcome to Art with Ian. Today, we're talking about creature design. That's coming up next. All right, welcome to episode six of the creature design series. Today, we are talking about adding light to your creature. So in the last episode, we laid in these shadows. We did two shadow passes. So here's the second one and here's the first one. So that's where we started at the beginning of last episode. And then we added these in. And so now today we're going to start working in lights. So let's create a new layer. We need to clip this down. So we're going to hold alt and hover between the two layers and click. So that's clipped down. Uh, for my brush, I'm using my chalky render brush as always, and as always, I'll have a link for that up in the top corner. Now, we want to set this layer mode to overlay. For the shadows, we set the layer mode to multiply. Now we're setting the layer mode to overlay. And what that does is kind of like the same thing as multiply, only it brings, it lightens instead of darkens. And as we chose, um, you know, a warm sun, like a sun for the, the light, I'm up in the colors here. I've got, basically, I don't want to go too bright because it's going to, with this first light pass, I don't want to get too hot. I want to save that for like the, the, the end, basically, the really high highlights, hot highlights. Right now, I just want to get a sense of the overall light hitting form. And as I described with my direction of light, we're not so late in the day that um, that we're going to be starting to get orange light. Uh, just like we also don't have super cool shadows because it's just not quite late enough in the day. The sun hasn't gone down far enough quite yet for that. So I've chosen basically a very grayed down, probably you know like a ten percent gray with a little bit of saturation, a little bit of yellow in here on the uh, hue. So let's go ahead and see how that looks. And um, I'm just gonna start painting and you know, thinking about my direction of light over my shoulder from the left so that we know that this whole area here along the forms are, is gonna be getting hit. It's perpendicular to the light basically right here so we're just going to start laying some some light in basically where we see that the forms are turned into light and we kind of described that by not putting shadows there you know to some degree so let's just uh, continue to push that feeling that we already started to establish And just like with the shadows, I'm basically going for for my big shapes here. I'm I'm trying to hit my you know create the biggest shapes of light, but a little bit more. I'm going a little bit more uh, subtle than with the big old shadow shapes. Like I'm trying to let the light fall off and and leave some of the original local color, so that we start creating this you know feeling of the turning forms even further. So we basically go light and then it falls off and then starts to turn into shadow. Mostly that's what I'm uh, doing in on the rounder forms. Obviously if something's really sharp then I don't I don't want there to be a subtle fall off because that describes round form. But this guy's got a lot of round forms. A lot of radial stuff happening on him. Which a lot of organic you know creatures and things are do have that. A lot of rounded forms. here sorry if you can hear my dog snoring he's down below me here he didn't want to leave the room so I, I didn't have the heart to make him go <laughs> but he's uh he snores so I apologize if you hear him All right, so I think this is a pretty good first bit of light, getting light down. Let's just go ahead and check. Oh, we got to get in here. So you would 
you you kind of you want to think about like what part of the form is actually sticking out mo the most perpendicular so just because this part of the forms at the bottom of the shape doesn't mean it's turned necessarily away from the light so I want because these are lipping out and over the the last plate that that means in my head they're coming out to make to get around that the next plate and so that's actually where they turn into the into the light down towards the bottom of the form I might just introduce a little bit of bounce light into here just kind of light it back up a little bit so it's not too dark let's hit that lip there with a little bit of light okay I think that's probably pretty good for Oh yeah, I wanted to, yeah, I gotta zoom in. I really, I try to avoid zooming in for as long as I can because once you start to zoom in, you go into, you can get into noodle detail land real quick. At least I can, and and I know that that's a, a weakness of mine, so I try to avoid it until, until details is all that's left, basically, you know what I mean? And then obviously, if I want a detailed piece, then I, I have no choice, but... Let's just uh, get some of these. I need to actually put some shadow on that. And that's, um, I'm going to be doing a seventh episode so that I can address the way that I finalize paintings because I don't stop at this multiply overlay um, part. Like, this isn't the end. So, what I do, what I'm doing here is I'm actually creating a color palette. The multiply and overlay modes help me to create an authentic more authentic color palette and once I like that I merge everything down and then I and then I go in and paint manually over everything like I just start using my color picker to pull these colors you know kind of a thing but which you couldn't do with the overlay layer on because it would it would totally mess mess with the uh, the, oh, the layer mode would mess with the look you know but yeah, so this is basically what this is all about, is, is laying in a nice authentic sense of that light and shadow, what colors they might actually be over the local color, how they really affect your local values, basically. And then from there, we, we continue the painting without layer modes, which I think helps uh, keep it from flattening out, for one thing. You know, if you layer modes can kind of flat if you're not careful they can kind of flatten your image so you have to you have to know when to kind of call it good on the layer mode side of things a little bit of bounce light there I should probably not really be doing my bounce light with the overlay mode I want to do that separately but Maybe just a little bit. Definitely want to do a little more describing of these spiky forms, spiky shapes on the shell when I later on in the process. But for now, just trying to keep it mostly loose so that I don't get caught up in details. should probably paint a little bit of light right along this edge. A little bit of light right here is going to help really make sure that you feel that cast shadow right there. i got to be careful I don't go too far with it though. Um, I, I like using a soft eraser to ease back the light a bit. Uh, it just kind of helps to make sure that I get that, uh, especially in areas where I want there to be feel like a half tone or you know like the light falls off naturally, you know just kind of it's just the way I like to work. It's kind of a bit like sculpting. You push and you pull, 
you know, and you work the forms until you have something you like. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at what we just did here. So adding light. I should name this to light one. So let's see what we got. So it literally looks like we're turning a light on and off. That's what we're going for. Without it, look how flat that looks now comparatively. So yeah, it makes a really big difference putting in light. So now I'm going to create a new layer. For this one, I think I might actually just keep it on top of my line drawing. I might start painting some of my line drawing out with it and I'm not going to clip it down for that reason. And I'm going to kind of just keep it, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to set it to overlay, I'm going to bump it over. Overlay adds saturation to your color. So if you don't, if you want to kind of match the, over, the look of overlay without using the mode, you have to bump your saturation up a little bit and your value up a little bit too. So I'm going to try that. And I'm just going to come in here get my brush back. I'm going to come in here and start defining some of these edges with light instead of instead of line. And that's going to help establish a bit of, you know, a bit more realism as we start to paint our um, our line work out. I'm going to say this is kind of where the, the main hot spot of light is hitting, right, 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 right around here. going into shadow but I might just just catch a tiny bit of light at the top of that just to help describe it there little bits of light some of these shadows if you watched the shadow up the shading episode you'll remember me saying I'm just gonna put cash shadows in and if I add light it'll start looking like these the, there are these bumps and you know, spikes and extra forms on here. So that's what I'm doing there. Not really sure if I feel that. Okay, let's get back to this light color. And I'm going to say this right here is catching like the actual sun. So what I'm doing now is I'm basically I'm painting in where when you look at something, the sun, your point of view hits the object and that's where you see the sun or whatever light source actually hitting it and bouncing. That's where your hot spots are. That's where like you're actually seeing a reflection of the light source and so you obviously have to be careful not to overdo this I think it's easy to overdo it um, that's the nice thing about kind of having the eraser on hand as a technique you know where you just you're always ready to push stuff back there's some nice texture here and I want to help sell that I'm just gonna pop some lights on to help make it feel like they're they're more tactile. Some light on there. I'm kind of by by painting out these lines up here. I'm kind of say, saying that there's some a uh, bit of rim lighting kind of happening. which I kind of have to be careful 
because I didn't really choose a time of day that necessarily works that well with rim lighting. The sun would actually need to be a little bit lower. But I'm just going to go with it a little bit here and just kind of see how we go. Just because I, I like the look of allowing light to, you know, define edges kind of a little bit. It's a cool look. You have to be careful though, like when I come back in with my eraser, I'm going to be making sure that the light doesn't just feel like a straight line following every form exactly perfectly because that's not how light falls on things. And you might see that a lot in art, in people's work where, like for example, see this form, how it's turning? This needs to turn away from the light eventually. It, it can't all be lit up the same. But I'm just kind of following the shapes and you know here I'll just have it fall off because there's enough of it that it's obvious I need to do that but you know following the forms a bit like this makes it so that I can kind of with the eraser I can choose how much I want the fall off to be and, and it's just kind of the way I work you know if you don't have to do that obviously you can just paint the amount of fall off you want as you go just make sure that you that you do paint some amount of fall off as you go, otherwise it's gonna look like you just outlined your painting with a color, basically. Just kinda of wanna maybe start hinting at how far I wanna take the texture in, in here. This ridge right here, definitely wanna hit this ridge. This is one of those parts that I've I've been talking about, how I want it to be sharp and I want it to be catching nice hot light right there and then pushed hard into shadow. I said about getting these wrinkles to read really well and through here that's definitely some light in here and stuff is gonna definitely do that just little hints of it start reinforcing some of the textures that I put into here I remember on a one of the early episodes I can't remember which one it was I said I probably wouldn't leave these in here these lines and I would just uh, it was just to help me tell myself I was going to turn the form, but then I kind of like them, so I'm just, I think I'm going to actually back them up. Instead of taking them out, I think I'm going to actually reinforce them. Because they kind of work for me. Right, let's back off of this thing a little bit. Some of those pop a bit. Get a hot spot on bicep. All right. Let me bring my eraser back and just start to kind of ease some of this stuff back a little bit, like that, right there. here just kind of want to create a little bit more dynamic to how the light is striking the forms and stuff getting something that I like. 
Normally I don't go, you know, rush into like a color dodge situation, but uh, I don't want this video to go on for like ever and ever kind of a thing, you know, so I'm going to create a new layer here. Oh, I should have called this light to, I'm going to call this hot light. This is, this is one of those things where you, you kind of experiment to a degree, you know, and uh, see how bright you really want to push it. So I'm going to go, you know, grab color dodge here and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to turn off blend clipped layers as group and turn off transparency layers or shapes layer or whatever and turn on blend interior effects as group. And I'm going to change my brush to an airbrush, blow this up a bit. Did I actually switch back to my brush? I did not. That'll be why nothing happened. All right. Here we go. You gotta be careful, real careful when you do this. Like, it gets out of control really fast. This is a really great method for creating like um, shiny surfaces. Certainly I want his shell to feel pretty hard surfaced and usually hard surfaces are very reflective and shiny. So definitely getting it on, on here specifically. But just, to, you know, some touches around the, the general forms. Kind of separating the surfaces. So leaving it off of his more organic surfaces or his more um, soft surface and pushing it a little bit more on his hard surfaces. Okay. Get a little something going. Now we need to work in a little bit of bounce light. So I'm going to actually, I think I'll create this bounce light layer under the hot light. I'm gonna call this bounce. I'm also actually going to take, nah, I think I'll leave it for now. Okay, so bounce light. We gotta think of the environment that he would normally be in since I haven't painted one. I probably should, but you know, maybe before the last episode I'll paint a very quick environment. But I see him being in a marshy, swampy kind of a thing, right? So I'm gonna, for bounce light, I'm gonna get into the greens, very grayed down because it's bounce light and I don't want it to be too crazy or anything but so we're gonna experiment here with uh, I'm just gonna try something out and see if, you know I'll adjust if I need but let's just go with this see if it's too too much Also, we need to get some, you know, there'll be bounce light from his own surfaces on him too. So I need to work that in, but I think I'm going to start with green for the overall bounce from the surface of the environment, from the environment in general. And then I'll work a little bit of bounce from the, his own surfaces onto him. Certainly down here where his hands are getting close to the environment, we'd start seeing some bounce light. Pretty soon also I'm gonna have to start lowering down the uh, the opacity of my line drawing so that I can start to actually paint it out. 
like for real paint it out not just paint over the top of it but like so I can like actually get it out of the painting I'm also probably gonna do some blue ambient light from the sky which probably wouldn't actually show up in uh, in real life in this kind of a lighting setup because it, the, the sun's too bright but I will take artistic license because I want to show the forms and and uh, it looks good <laughs> so you know it's one of those things Okay, let's work the, let's get like a, this kind of a color. Let's work some of this, you know, bouncing that into that. That's way too bright though, way too bright. Let's bring it down. Working some bounce from this surface up onto his face here. And under his brow, along here. And let's start describing some texture in his skin on his face too, just using a little bit of bounce light to do that. A little bounce light in here, up under this, you know, some of this light in, in these wrinkles could actually be bounce light as well as, so bounce light up to this ridge line here. bit in here let's use this light from the leg here where it's hitting the leg to bounce up into this here It's really what you're trying to accomplish here is you're, you're going around and trying to make sure that things you want the viewer to understand and not be lost in shadow or whatever. You want to use, you know, use the, the fact that bounce light exists to basically start re-describing some of these forms to them. Okay, I think... I think for now I'm probably pretty okay. I I tend to work my pieces in in these kind of phase like oh and also where you where you've blended colors you can like you can grab a color of the blend of like the green and the tan and kind of paint into your subject a little bit to really help establish a feeling of the of that light falling on or you know cascading on these rounder forms and so it's not just an edge all the time you know like in here this might actually just pick up some of that that ground color in the shadow like like that you know just that little bit so and that this is kind of starting to get into that phase like I'm talking about where I go beyond my multiply and overlay modes phase and I just start picking out colors and I start like just legitimately painting everything up. So I'm going to do one more light pass here. I'm going to call this one ambient. And we'll go for like a blue, very grayed down kind of a blue. And pretty dark as well. We'll just start with this and see what we get. I'm going to come in here and things especially pointing towards the sky I'm kind of going to repeat what I did over here with the, the rim lighting with some ambient light and kind of try to describe some of these forms on this side with light and 
without a good background or scene in here, it doesn't probably make as much sense right now. But before the next step, before the last episode where I do final cleanup stuff, I will paint some environment in here to, to help really fully show off why this, you know, doing ambient light on this other side is really important. I mean, it's not vital. Like, sometimes it's nice to actually have edges get lost and things. Like, that's totally a, a valid way to do it. But I I tend to lean in the, like, describe my forms and, and make the things that I designed pop. You know, I want, I'd rather the viewer really see and understand what I've designed than, than lose a visual on it because it gets lost. However, it I mean, if you're doing something, like, scary or something... Like you want to do, you know, like a something more horror, or you know, you you want to create tension. Then by all means, making it hard for them to see everything is is a great way to do that because then there's mystery. Like you can't see what everything is, you know. So. You kind of want to stick to like the deepest shadows for this ambient light because if you start setting it next to areas of of actual light it really just your viewer is not going to buy it anymore because it's not you can't see this kind of blue ambient light um, next to sunlight you just can't it's like literally impossible so you know it's fine to take artistic license, and I highly recommend that you do to, to get the design you want to get out, you know. But make sure that you nod to reality just enough to make sure that your viewer doesn't have this, like, I don't understand why I don't believe what I see. Like, it doesn't look believable. They might not know why, really, but they will know. And honestly, it's not their job to know why. It's just their job to look at it and say, I like it or I don't like it, you know. Might be kind of cool to do blue on one side of one, like just maybe one of these, like right here and this one maybe right here, where you actually get them that living that close together. And obviously I'll have to reinforce the core shadow on this. There's definitely some rendering work to be done here. Uh, in my, you know, cleanup episode. And that's totally fine. I'm not sure. I think I might be misdescribing this form here. I think that this is the actually where I just want the arm to, to go, if I remember correctly. And then this is actually down below on his shell. In fact, if I recall, I think that right there is the area I said I was going to push into deep enough shadow that you would just not be able to tell what it is. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's that's the spot right there. And so I think that that's probably what I will do eventually. Because why the hell not? Okay, I think we're getting getting to the point now where I can kind of back this off. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to go just a little bit bluer and a little bit lighter. And kind of get a little bit like highlight within the ambient light, like the brightest points of ambient light. Nothing's final, by the way, when you paint. Like, until until you tell yourself that you just have to stop and move on to something else, you can, you know, none of this stuff is like the, once I say I'm done with the first, my first go at ambient light, it doesn't mean, like, legitimately I'm never painting ambient light again while I work on this piece. It's just my first pass, you know? So... 
Let's back off. Okay, I'm gonna get my soft eraser, which is basically just the airbrush on set to erase. Or, you know, you grab your eraser tool and then get an air airbrush. And just like I did on my other side there with the light, I'm just gonna go in and kind of paint, ease everything down. I'm, I kind of, the way I think of this is it's kind of like pushing what I did into the image. So it doesn't feel like it's just sitting right on top, you know? Just easing things back that little bit, just making it all start to sit in the in the image. So let's take a look, see here. All right, I think for a starting point, my you know, without doing going into cleanup and really you know finalizing the image and without an, a full-on environment to place him in to kind of help you know see what we want to do with the amount of bounce light and all that kind of stuff I think we've got light on this guy so that's gonna wrap up this episode I hope you really enjoyed it I hope you learned something um, if you did enjoy this episode don't forget to like and subscribe if you're a first-time viewer please hit the bell and uh, that really helps me out. Comment on the video. Follow me on Instagram, and I will see you guys in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Share it with your friends. Ring the bell for notifications of future videos, and I'll see you guys in the next one.